Now, before you think that this might be clickbait, it's not. It's not neo ball, new ball, next ball. It really is the N word. And it took me down a little bit of a squash rabbit hole and I thought I'd share it with you because I think it's quite interesting. Now, I was reading the Guinness Book of Squash by Mike Palmer and I came across this paragraph. The Greenwich company, now amalgamated with Slazenger, began making their N word ball for the officers at the Woolwich Barracks close to their factory between 1900 and 1905. And in spite of its name, the ball was colored either white, red, or black. Now here is an advertisement right next to the page. And as you can see, it's clearly labeled the N-word ball. Why it was called that, we don't really know. Now you might assume, like I probably did at first, that it was to do with the color. But Strangely, a few days later, I was reading this book, which is the Squash Rackets Annual 1938-1939, and I came across this advertisement. Now, what you can see is that the N-word is used as a color, and it's been suggested that it was either dark brown or brown. Now, of course, nowadays it's used as a pejorative, whether we spell it the, this way or the modern spelling, it's an insult. Now, I don't want anybody to think that I'm trying to justify its use here. I'm not trying to justify its use in any situation. I am trying to understand why the ball was called that and the context of the historical situation. It didn't take me long to find another advert from around this period with exactly the same use of the word. So then I was thinking, okay, well, we don't really know why that word was used to describe that ball, but why would it be available in black red and white and that got me thinking white why would there be white balls now well if you think about it for a little bit it kind of makes sense you probably know that squash rackets now we call it squash came from a game called rackets rackets is played on a much bigger court black stone walls stone floor very hard ball and more or less the same racket a rackets racket is a little bit longer and in fact here is a clip from the 2024 British Open final between Ben Corston and Freddie Bristow. Oh, ben just doing really well to make Freddie hit one more point. Oh my golly, that is absolutely like squash on steroids. It looks incredible. Now, I was very lucky to actually try squash many, many years ago. Maybe some of you know that squash was supposedly originated at Harrow, but not everybody agrees with that. Uh, there was an advertisement in the newspaper, I actually was born quite close to Harrow, and it said, we're looking for an assistant rackets master. And I was a young squash coach and I applied. And I called the man and he, he said, okay, come and see me. So I went to see him and he took me on court and it's fantastic to play. As a squash player, rackets is just so much faster. It's just incredible. Anyway, um, he said to me, look, your only duty will be to stand on the balcony and shout, okay, or I can't remember the phrase. Uh, you might have heard it in the, the clip just now, to make sure it's safe. And I said, well, when do I get to teach them? You don't get to teach them, I teach them. Um, and I said, okay. And he said, interestingly enough, we had another squash player here last week. Oh, I said, who? Del Harris. Now, for those of you quite young, Del Harris was British number one. He was supposed to be the person who might take away the crown from, you know, Jahangir Khan. It didn't work out that way, but he was an incredible squash player. Anyway, he came down the week before I got there at Harrow and was apparently gonna, was thinking about, you know, be, training to try and become the world champion rackets player, but he soon realized, as I did after five minutes on a rackets court, that it is a very, very different game, and it needs a very different technique and a very different mindset. So if you ever get a chance to play some rackets, go and have a go. So many of these squash courts that were first starting to be built were built by private people. They were courts that were built by um, schools and maybe some very early clubs, but many of the private courts that were built were just for the people, people who had gone to those schools. And interestingly, they built them in any way they wanted. Some of them built them with stone walls, some of them built them with wood walls, and maybe some other material as well. In fact, I even heard of a court that had cork floor, 
which sounds pretty interesting. Anyway, so they're building these courts all over the place in the country, and they're any sizes that they want them to be. There's no fixed size, so they build them at any size. And probably they built them with black walls because they've just been accustomed to that. So that makes sense now, doesn't it? You've got a white ball because maybe many of those courts were black walls. So all of these courts all over the country, very different sizes, which means they use different balls. Now, I can't find it in any of the books that I've read, but I definitely read it. And the question was, what's the best squash ball to use? And the answer was, whatever ball is mostly used on that court. They had lots of different balls. Some balls had a hole in it. Now, I've never seen them, but apparently they had a hole in it. Some were a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. And of course, back in the 1900s, the early 1900s, the manufacturing tolerances probably weren't as good as they are today. So the balls, each ball, the same ball supposedly, was probably slightly different. And that's pretty interesting. And that's why these balls were available in red and white. And then it got to the point where some of the bigger clubs decided to commission balls specifically for their club. So that you didn't just turn up and you had like 10 different balls that each person different, each different person used. No, no, you had one ball. And that's where the N-word ball seems to have started its life. It was built for a club, made for a club, and they gave it a name. As I said at the beginning, we don't know why it was called that, because it certainly doesn't seem to be to the colour. So can you imagine, around this time, you could go to many different courts, they would each be a little bit different in size, they'd each be a little bit different in construction and the floor, and you'd use different balls. It'd be like the Wild West. Now, just for a second, I kind of feel that Although I understand why squash standardized the size of the court exactly and standardized the ball, I understand that. I kind of feel that there was a missed opportunity maybe, that if we'd have had a range of courts, you know, for example, they could be maybe this different in far as width is concerned, and maybe this different as far as length. We'd get, uh, I don't know, something like tennis where you've got different surfaces and you get specialists. You get specialists who are better at wider courts and narrow courts. Anyway, argue with me in the, in the comments if you want to know about that. But uh, I think it'd be interesting. So I'm back to my original question. Black walls, white court. But, so why do we now have white walls and a black court? Well, I don't know. That's the kind of interesting thing about history is that you want to keep searching. Now, I'm not a historian. Uh, I haven't read all of the squash books in the world. In fact, I haven't even read all of the ones in the shelf behind me. And the information might be there, but I'm going to take a guess. At a time, back in, the, back in the day, squash was often called baby rackets. And I kind of think that the people who were administering the game, playing the game, were thinking, we need to separate ourselves now from rackets. Although we got it in our title, we need to separate ourselves. And perhaps somebody said, well, what better way to do that than to change the color of the walls completely? Let's go opposite. We go from black to white, and then we just have a black ball. In fact, the black ball eventually morphed into a green ball, and now we are back to a black ball. I don't know. If you know why we have white walls, let me know. Maybe it was the construction was cheaper because the courts were expensive and they were private. Maybe it was cheaper to do that. Maybe making the ball was easier to make in black if it was rubber. Perhaps making a white rubber ball was difficult at the time. Could be a lot of reasons. So there's my little rabbit hole. We've got the N-word ball available in white. Why? Well, because probably most courts were black at the time. Okay, then they began to standardize things. Then they had the N-word ball, and suddenly we are white quartz and black ball. I thought it was an interesting little, um, little rabbit hole. If you like this kind of video, let me know in comments and I'll maybe make some more. And as always, do something every single day to improve your squash. See ya.